Good morning, everyone, and welcome into Wake and Take. It's your boy, Jason, and we've got some football to talk about today. Today, we are going over to TierMaker.com. I have uploaded headshots for the top 59 rookies, but we rounded it up to 60 for the title. We'll see if we end up doing all 60. This might drag a little bit longer than I thought, but I think we got it. I think it's going to be fun. So we're going to be talking about rookies today. In fact, we're going to be talking fantasy football rookies. And in fact, we're going to be talking probably too many rookies. So definitely this morning in particular, pull out your coffee and enjoy the show. All right. Good morning to everyone here in the chat. Jamie Rubio, player profiler themselves. Good morning to you. Thank you for tuning in on Instagram on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube, uh, on the podcast feed. If you're listening later on the podcast, thanks for tuning in. This might this might not make the podcast feed. We'll see. If, if you're listening to this on the podcast feed, obviously it made it. But I don't know. We'll see how a, how a tier list kind of translates to an audio thing anyway. Good morning to you, Hayden. Good morning. All right. So uh, basically what we're going to do today is just go through the, the, the tier list. Uh, there's, a, there's you know, some news out there, but I, I think that that would just kind of detract from this thing. Because like I said, 60 rookies is kind of a lot of rookies. <laughs> um, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, let's see. All right. Let's do this preview. How's it looking? How's it looking, everyone? That, that look all right? I think that looks good. I think that looks good. Right. You can see the tiers are true studs, stud potential. So we'll see how that tiers out in a bit. We'll, we'll discuss that. And then late first rookie pick and early second rookie pick amid the late second rookie pick. And then it all kind of jumbled together, third, fourth, fifth, using fab. I've even got fab rookies. And then players I'm just not even touching with a 10-foot pole. I just don't want them. I don't want them. I don't want them. Uh, and this is pre-draft. We'll probably do a post-draft one as well because why not? Let me, let me see if I zoom in one more time how that looks. Uh, no, that blocks the titles. Okay, cool. So we'll go ahead and get started here, and we'll just start. We'll we'll go and order the picture just uh, in, instead of going like best rookie or whatever. So we'll start. This is Adonai Mitchell, and I think, ooh, we're going to start with stud potential. We're going to start with stud potential for Adonai Mitchell. I think that's how this tier is going to go. I think my true studs are going to be my guys like Marvin Harrison Jr. or whatever, and then stud potential are going to be those other guys that are probably going to be a first-round pick with some serious upside. Uh, so Adonai Mitchell goes there, of course, after his impressive combine performance. We'll have to see what his landing spot is, but I like him a lot. Audric Estime. <laughs> Audric Estime. We will throw him for now. I think fourth round rookie pick. I'm not really too into Audric Estime, if I'm going to be honest with you guys. You know, very disappointing combine. Uh, but, you know, with the right landing spot, we could see if he'll be successful. He had a pretty good career at Notre Dame. So we'll we'll see. Ben Sinnott right now, uh, probably a third round rookie pick. Probably a third round rookie pick. You, well, I guess fourth. We'll, we'll throw him in fourth. We'll throw him in fourth. Uh, but we'll put him ahead of Estime. I think Ben Sinnott, especially after the draft, is going to be a riser. I really do think that NFL teams are going to latch on to his profile Really impressive combine performance and also a uh, really good senior bowl performance, some decent college stats as well. I think Ben Sinnott's going to translate well to the NFL. Uh, so I like him. I really do like Sinnott. Um, I think in third round, maybe a third round rookie pick, a tight end premium, fourth round. He's like right in that tier, like three, 3.5 round rookie pick, I think. I think that, but I like Sinnott. So we'll, we'll kind of see. Uh, Blake Corum. Ooh. I mean, so this has the a lot of potential to change, but I think right now early second is probably where this guy's going to fall. Uh, well, I'll, I'll for now throw him in late first because I think that's kind of a tier a, a tier of its own almost. Where, yeah, the late first rookie picks will be the guys that I think kind of take a rise based on draft capital. Uh, uh, you know, they might not be a late first right now, but I think that they're definitely worth it based on their profile, uh, and I think that's kind of a great way to tackle this. So right now we'll throw Blake Corum in late first. And we'll throw Bo Nix in the early second rookie pick. I think that Bo Nix and Michael Penix, to a certain degree, are going to be quarterbacks with a ton of potential to rise. So maybe actually with that same lesson, I'll throw him in late first rookie pick with Bo Nix for super flex leagues. In fact, guys, we're going to go ahead and say, I should have probably stated that this is, for the most part, going to be a super flex rookie tier ranking uh, to, to help that out in terms of the quarterbacks. At least when I rank quarterbacks, I think that, 
quarterbacks, I guess, are going to, you know, you can kind of look at this and see their own tier almost as opposed to it being like a super flex thing because it'll it'll tier out differently. I, I should probably stop talking about the the, uh, the the intricacies of this. We'll see it, how it plays out, but um, essentially I think quarterbacks are almost going to be dealt differently than some of the other positions. But either way, Bo Nix, late first rookie round pick, I think that that's fair with his potential and with the right draft capital, that could help a lot. Um, so Braylon Allen right now, I'm going to go ahead and throw in that mid to late second round rookie pick. Um, I don't think he's quite a late first or really quite an early second. I, I think that he's you know slightly below that. So we'll do mid to late second. I still think Braylon Allen's probably going to get some decent draft capital and I still like his profile. So I, we'll, we'll go ahead and throw him mid to late second for now. Brendan Rice, for me, is a third-round rookie pick. Uh, you can probably get him in fourths right now, but he's a third-round rookie pick to me. I think especially after the draft, he's going to solidify himself there. I think he's going to get better draft capital than people are expecting. And I also just like Brendan Rice. He really impressed me at the Senior Bowl, and then he backed it up with a really impressive combine performance as well. And then I got some sort of... Um, uh, what's it? Uh, confirmation bias uh, from Maddie Kiwoom because one of my takeaways from the Senior Bowl with Brendan Rice was that he looked bigger, faster, stronger than his height and weight suggested. Uh, and Maddie Kiwoom kind of came away with the same exact thing when he saw him at the combine. Brendan Rice is a very, very interesting prospect, so I'm going to throw him in third round rookie pick for now. Uh, and I think that's probably where he'll end up being. Brian Thomas, we've of course got to just throw him with Adonai Mitchell. I think I'm going to go ahead and take my flag plant and put Brian Thomas above Adonai Mitchell. I think I'm going to do it. I think a lot of people are having Adonai Mitchell ahead of Brian Thomas for fantasy football. Um, for me, I'm going to go with Brian Thomas ahead of Adonai Mitchell, both very similar profiles, but I just think Brian Thomas has a bit more upside, uh, you know, a little bit taller, a little bit heavier, a little bit faster, even if it's all minuscule differences. So I'm going to go with Brian Thomas in stud potential with Adonai Mitchell. Brock Bowers, he's true stud. He's a true Brock Bowers is a true stud. I'm not going to argue this. I, 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 uh, you know, I, I obviously he could bust, but I just don't really see that being the case here. I think that Brock Bowers is just simply a true stud, um, and he, he's just going to be awesome. I, I, I've been debating even full disclosure. I just traded for the 105 in the Trade Gods Invitational League. And I'm debating, I mean, I, I'm probably going to end up with one of the three quarterbacks. I think Marvin Harrison Jr. and Malik Neighbors will be picked before the 105. So I'll probably be stuck with Drake May or Jaden Daniels. But I'm starting to think there's a world where I could end up drafting Brock Bowers there too. I really think that there's some potential rising here. Uh, just because it is a tight end premium league as well. It, it's probably a, a, not a smart move. But I just think that Brock Bowers is a prospect that's not necessarily going to bust and will retain value. Because let's talk about this, actually. Um, rookie tight ends and young tight ends in general, especially ones that garner high draft capital, like Kyle Pitts, for example, this, this is where I'm going with it. They're pretty insulated, like tight ends that get the high draft capital. You, you have to give up a lot to, to get them. Kyle Pitts, for example, right. You know, gets drafted super high in the NFL draft, gets super, gets drafted super high in our rookie drafts. And now after two bad seasons, it still takes at least a first to acquire Kyle Pitts. Uh, despite having, you know, an injury, a really disappointing third year as well. Yet Kyle Pitts has still remained insulated just because everyone is still expecting him to break out at some point. So I think that's the case with Brock Bowers as well. Even if Brock Bowers maybe comes out slow, you're still going to be able to swap Brock Bowers for a first round pick next year if you have to. So I just think the insulation of value is very, very interesting when it comes to Brock Bowers. So I am asked, what did I give up for the 105? This is an important question. I gave up Nico Collins, Michael Mayer, and Gabe Davis for the 105. I don't know how I feel about it. I think right now I lost it. And I think especially if Michael Mayer and Nico Collins hit like I expect them to, those are both players that I like, uh, that I'll be upset. But I wanted the 105. What can I say? It's just nice to be in those draft sweepstakes. What can I say? What can I say? So either way, Brock Bauer is a true stud. Bucky Irving. Bucky Irving. I'm going to put him in third round rookie pick. I think he's a, a tier below Braylon Allen, but a tier above Audric Estime to me. Uh, not really much to argue about it, really. I just That's just kind of how I feel. I think Bucky Irving, of course, also had a disappointing combine like Audric Estime, but just has a little bit better stats. And Braylon Allen has even better stats and just looks better as a prospect. So anyway, that's that. Cade Stover. I'm probably just not drafting. I, I, I'm probably just not going to draft Cade Stover. I find it, um, 
not very smart really to draft tight ends in rookie drafts unless they have some ceiling as a receiver. And I don't really see that with Cade Stover. I think he's fine. And I think he can be a good tight end at the NFL level. But when I look at him, all I see is roster clogger for my fantasy football team. So I'm not drafting. I'm not even going to use fab on Cade Stover, which brings us to Caleb Williams, who is also going to find himself in true stud category above Brock Bowers even. In in super flex leagues above Brock Bowers and single quarterback leagues, I still think that this is a debate. It it really will be. Uh, So we'll see. But uh, for for all intents and purposes, we're going to throw Caleb Williams ahead of Brock Bowers in the true stud category. Let's see. Let's go ahead and do Cody Schrader. Cody Schrader. We're going to do we're going to do fifth round rookie pick, I think. uh, Yeah, I think fifth round. If he's still hanging around, I might feel comfortable. Um, yeah, uh, interesting prospect. I want to see his draft capital, I guess. So maybe maybe I'll throw him along with a bunch of other running backs later into this fab. I almost want to move estimate down. I'm just not a big, I don't know. The running backs are hard to tear out. I'm just going to go ahead and say it right now. The running backs are very hard to tear out just because I got to see landing spot for running back in particular. You've got to see draft capital for running back in particular. Um, so, well, we'll do this. We'll, we'll put Audra Gassane back and forth. We'll put Cody Schrader in the fifth, and we'll see if that changes over, over the course of this. Devontae Walker, very interesting. I'll throw him in third round for now. I think that this third round rookie pick is going to be a lot of these players where they have, you know, lots of potential, like a Brendan Rice like a Bucky Irving, but something kind of mars their their perspective around the community. Tez Walkers has been drops. He had struggled with drops at the Senior Bowl, had some drops at the Combine as well, has struggled with hands throughout this process, So, but has been an incredible route runner, uh, a really, really good route runner. So Devon Tez Walker, I'm going to throw him in the third round rookie pick category and just hope that he can overcome uh, his drop issues, which leads us, I believe, I believe this is Dylan Johnson right here. And for now, I'm just going to throw him in the fab category. Actually, I'll throw him in fifth round rookie pick with Cody Schrader for now. These are two subject to change for sure. But Dylan Johnson, I like a lot just because of what he demonstrated in the national championship. Uh, I think he'll use that kind of grit to earn himself on the NFL roster uh, just by playing through an injury. I know his stats weren't the greatest. I know his combine wasn't the greatest. But I do think he'll earn a roster spot. So if he's still hanging around in the fifth round and gets a decent roster spot, screw it. I'll I'll draft some Dylan Johnson. Which leads us to Drake May. And this is where the quarterback tiering system is going to go differently. I don't think it's fair to throw Drake May in the same uh, tier as Caleb Williams. I just don't. So we're going to throw him in stud potential. Uh, Drake May obviously just has some stuff to work on. Tons and tons of potential with him. I'm not knocking him at all. But as you see with this tier, I think Drake May belongs in a tier with a Brian Thomas and an Adonai Mitchell, much more than a tier with Caleb Williams and Brock Bowers and later Marvin Harrison Jr. I just think that it's got to be a little bit different. I think that we have to kind of put a tier gap there, at least when it comes to the quarterback position. Now, if this, like, say this was truly a super flex, truly a super flex, like, what should you use your rookie picks on then drake may would go up a category but this is more so tearing out that kind of first half of athletes in that first round right there uh so he's a stud potential for me drake may which brings us to dylan laub uh who i think right now i'm gonna have to throw in the third round rookie pick but if he gets some good draft capital he might find himself in the mid to late second round rookie pick for now i'll throw him in third um, I, I, in fact, I'll put him ahead of Bucky Irving. I'll throw Devontae Walker ahead of Bucky Irving too, uh, just because he's a running back. And Dylan Laub, though, also a running back, is a very much uh, uh, a pass catching running back. We all know it. We, that's kind of the whole thing about Dylan Laub. He's a really, 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 really good pass catcher. Uh, literally had like a 200 yard receiving game against Central Michigan last season, like with like 15 targets or something crazy like that. So I'm going to put him in third round rookie pick. I think he has a lot of potential. Uh, He could move up even, which brings us now to this is Frank Gore Jr. This is another running back that I'll be drafting in the fifth round if they hang around uh, just because, you know, it's Frank Gore Jr. I'm almost starting to think I added one too many tiers, but we'll see. But I like Frank Gore Sr., of course, so Jr. could be fine. 
this fifth round is just a lot of this can change, but it, it's just, you know, these are some players that I don't necessarily want to go through the cracks. I think that do have some potential there. Isaac Garendo, I'm going to put in the fourth round, uh, probably ahead of Estime for sure. In fact, I might, we'll do high fourth round. I'm gonna, I might move Bucky Irving down with Audric Estime. Um, yeah, I'm going to move Bucky Irving down with Audric Estime and put Isaac Garendo. We're getting interesting here. We're getting interesting here. Isaac Garendo, top of the fourth round, I think, is where I'll put him. Just because, like uh, like some of the guys in the third round rookie picks, Brendan Rice, Devontae Walker, Dylan Laub, there's a ton of potential there. But unlike them, uh, he didn't really do anything in college. So I don't think it's fair to necessarily put him in that third round rookie pick tier. But I do think he kind of belongs there in spirit. So I'm going to put him at the top of the fourth round rookie pick. I think if Isaac Rendo is staring you in the face, that you should draft him. I really do think that his profile is one that wins out in the NFL. I like it a lot. Really, really impressive combine. And I'm surprised that uh, in some point, the cases, he's not even going drafted. I'm going to even put my flag plant and say fourth round for Isaac Rendo. Which brings us to Isaiah Davis, who uh, I, I guess is fine. I guess I'm going to throw him in that fifth round rookie pick tier as well. This is where a lot of running backs are going to fall. So maybe that's also a fab thing. But either way, Isaiah Davis, pretty solid senior bowl. So I'll put him above the other three here. I'll actually put Cody Schrader above these uh, behind him um, in the fifth round. Uh, but either way, Isaiah Davis should be fine. We'll throw him in fifth round rookie pick. Well, I kind of want to see the the uh, what, what happens with him in terms of draft capital. Um, this is Jacob Cowing and I'm feeling fourth round for Jacob Cowing. I feel like a slight tier above these running backs. Maybe uh, we'll throw him, we'll throw him in top of the, well, oh gosh, that's a tough one. Jacob Cowing is tough. We'll do top of the fifth, top of the fifth right now uh for for jacob cowing just a very undersized receiver so that's just gonna be worrisome but i don't necessarily want him to go undrafted i think that he is a special prospect he looked really good at the senior bowl had a really solid combine as well and plays not necessarily bigger than his size but has some ups so although he's like five six uh he can still get up there and climb the ladder which he demonstrated at the senior bowl and on his college tape as well so i do like cowing as a prospect we'll throw him in the fifth round uh, I think this is like Jaden Shipley or something like that. Um, and I honestly don't really know too much about him. So I'm just going to, this is probably here. This is probably sacrilege or something. I'm probably going to get smoked for this one, but we're going to throw him in just not drafting because I don't really know anything about him. So it doesn't really seem that fair. So we'll, we'll, we'll throw him there. Jaheim Bell. Ah, uh, I guess fifth round, I guess fifth round. I, I like him better than Cade Stover a little bit, but this is one where Jaheim Bell, he needs the draft capital or a good landing spot because uh, he is a unique prospect as well, an undersized tight end in terms of height, but he does have the weight. He's really quick. He's kind of like a Chiga Conquo, if you will. So I think with the right landing spot, he could end up being utilized properly, but I'm not so sure that's the case. So we'll throw him, actually, we'll throw him in fab. We'll throw him in fab for now. I think that that's fair. Uh, little, little fab player, Jaheim Bell. Um, is this Jalen McMillan out of Washington, I think, uh, who is another player that just seems solid. I'm feeling, I'm feeling fourth round with him. I'm feeling the, he kind of fits himself in this category with the Bucky Irvings and Audric Estimes. So I'm going to throw him there. Um, and, and just a decent profile, decent college production. So like him, uh, Jalen Polk, I feel like he's kind of putting himself in this Braylon Allen tier where he was a really good college producer, not the most impressive combine, but not too bad either. Mid to late second, uh, is probably fair for Jalen Polk when you kind of put it out there, I guess. I don't, it's, that's a tough one too. Hmm. Jamari Thrash. Jamari Thrash, we're going to throw in the fifth round rookie pick tier. Maybe fourth, depending on his uh, landing spot, but not the most impressive at the Senior Bowl, but not bad either. And I like Jamari Thrash because he went to Georgia State. That's my alma mater before transferring to Louisville. So so go Thurs, if you will. Uh, get some nice Jamari Thrash action probably in the fifth round. I might end up moving people down to fab. Okay, Jatavian Sanders. I think that he is probably also in this mid to late second round rookie pick tier. When I'm looking at this tier, though, I really do like the third round rookie pick more. 
uh, I think that this mid to end second round range is kind of messy when I'm looking at this so far. It's very, very strange. Uh, Javon Baker. Uh, Javon Baker, we're going to go with, I'm feeling third round rookie pick. I think these third rounds is kind of guys I'm, I'm flag planting a little bit. I like them. I like Javon Baker. He he gives me some good vibes. Pretty solid com, or, uh, combine. Yeah, solid combine. Very solid senior bowl as well. And just has that dog in him. Certainly has that dog in him when you listen to him speak and how he talks about his game and stuff. He just has some tenacity. Uh, that's hard to get, you, you know, it's very George Pickens is my kind of comp for him. So I'm going to throw him in the third round rookie pick tier. I like him there. I like him there. And the third round, probably Jaden Daniels. We're going to put in stud potential. We're going to put in stud potential. I'm putting him above Drake may, I think uh, we'll see what happens with landing spot and all that. But I think it's unfair to put Drake may ahead of Jaden Daniels. If you're just going off what we know, Jaden Daniels has a better fantasy profile has better college production. So we're going to put him in stud potential as well. I don't, I want to put myself on record and saying that there is at least a half a step between Caleb Williams and Drake may and Jaden Daniels. So uh, I want Caleb Williams in a separate tier. And that's why I like stud potential is this is not a knock on them at all. These are still really, really good athletes with some potential there. So I'm going to put Jaden Daniels probably at the top of that tier, which brings us to Jalen Wright, who is going to be, uh, I'm going to put early second. I'm going to put early second. I think that Jalen Wright is a very interesting prospect, but I don't know if I feel comfortable enough putting him ahead of the other three running backs. That I think I'm going to put in that late first rookie pick tier. Um, just cause, right? Just cause I, I don't like a lot of his hype came from the combine. And I don't think that's necessarily the most indicative of running back success or anything. He was all right at Tennessee as well. Uh, well, actually pretty good at Tennessee. So I think that's a little unfair to just say, all right, but I don't think he belongs in this. I just, I don't know. I want to see the draft capital. I'm going to throw him an early second. I think he deserves to be in a tier above Braylon Allen, of course, but I think like in between Blake Corum and Braylon Allen is right about where I would have him. Uh, let's see. This is, I think this is Jaquan Jackson out of Tulane. So we're going to go with Fab and we're going to move Dylan Johnson and Frank Gore Jr. down to Fab <laughs> as well. Uh, just because, just because I, I don't know. I, I, maybe we can move Frank Gore Jr. Up. We'll move Frank Gore Jr. Up just for the bloodline. We're going to throw Jacon Jackson and fab. I like him. I actually do very, very smooth route runner looked incredible at the senior bowl. I'm not going to lie. Uh, so I think with the right landing spot could be something. So I'm going to keep my eye on him for now. Uh, put him in that, in that fab tier. So next up is JJ McCarthy. We're going to do late first round rookie pick for him. So I guess we're going to start this tier. We're going to do this tier. We're going to do this. Late first rookie pick right now, JJ McCarthy. I don't put him in stud potential. I think that there's a tier between McCarthy, Drake May, Jaden Daniels, Caleb Williams, Bo Nix, Michael Penix. I think he kind of deserves his own little gap right there. Don't think he's stud potential. I just don't. I don't think he has that high of a ceiling. I think he's got a decent floor, which is fine. And that's why I think late first round rookie pick is good for him. Uh, and this this is kind of setting. This looks a little better. This is starting to look a little better. Uh, this is Joe Milton. I'll throw a fifth round rookie pick on Joe Milton with that cannon of an arm. Why not? Why not? And also with Johnny Wilson, I'll take a fifth round rookie pick if I have to on him. Uh, just because of that, you know, just this height, you know, very athletic player. So I think that that's definitely something interesting. We'll put him, we'll put him behind Schrader. Let's just put him right there. Johnny Wilson. Why not? Why not? Fifth round rookie pick. Shoot for the stars. Jonathan Brooks. I think that this, I'm going to put him in late first round rookie pick. I think that Jonathan Brooks deserves to be in his own tier. I'm not worried about the ACL injury. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. I'm not really that worried about it. I think he'll be okay. I really do. Uh, and and I, I think that I, I think that draft capital is going to show that for us. I think that he's going to end up being a first round rookie pick. Uh, so I'm going to put him there. Uh Keon Coleman. Keon Coleman belongs in this mid to late second round rookie pick tier. Uh, we'll put him ahead of Jalen Polk and Jatavian Sanders. I'm not a big Keon Coleman fan, so I'm just going to put a mid to late second. And I think that that's about it. This mid to late second tier are the most like good, but something just rubs you the wrong way about them tier. Braylon Allen, Keon Coleman, Jalen Polk, Jatavian Sanders. Like there's some, I don't know, they're fine. They're fine. They're fine. Uh, but I think I would almost rather have a couple thirds to take some shots on these fun players. Anyway, Kamani Vidal. 
I'm going to also put a flag plant on. I guess I should probably say fourth round pick for him. Um, and we'll put him right with Isaac Garendo, I guess. Like those are two running backs that I really, really like. I think Kamani Vidal is going to be something special for sure. Uh, I, I love him. I really do. Really, really great profile. Uh, looked really good at the senior bowl as the thickest thighs you've seen in your entire life. Uh, Hank Aaron's nephew, so the blood runs pure. Uh, and compared himself to Ray Rice, Maurice Jones Drew, which are just two running backs that I am in love with, really. I, I, those, I know Ray Rice kind of, you know, bad personal things, but I just love those kind of smaller, powerful running backs. They're awesome to watch. So I love Kamani Vidal a ton. i will definitely be using my fourth rounds on him. Lad McConkey, he's putting himself in the late for – actually, we'll put him in early second. We'll put him in early second rookie tier. Um, I'm going to put him behind Jalen Wright. I, I'm going to go ahead and put that flag plant there too. I think that Lad McConkey needs to go after the running backs. I think that we need to have the big three running backs – and then we can have another wide receiver run with like Lab McConkey and another player I'm going to be putting in here as well. Um, but either way, I think that, you know, I know a lot of people are thinking first for him. I'm thinking early second with some Lab McConkey action. Luke McCaffrey. Luke McCaffrey, I'm going to throw in the fourth round rookie tier. I, I, I want to, I want, I want to do that. I think that Luke McCaffrey is going to be really, really nice. I really do. Um, I, I like him a lot. I really do. So I'm just going to go ahead and put him there in fourth round. I think he deserves to be in a tier above these fifth round rookies uh, for sure. Uh, so, yeah. So, yeah. I almost want, I'm going to throw Jaquan Jackson in fifth round rookie pick. Well, uh, we'll do Fab. I think you can get him for Fab. But he just reminds me of Jacob Cowing. Jaquan Jackson does. Like, I think these are two. I'm going to do it. I'm going to put Jaquan Jackson fifth round rookie pick. I think he's interesting. Either way. All right. Malachi Corley. Malachi Corley, he's a third round rookie pick. Third round rookie pick. I don't think he quite belongs in the mid to late second rookie pick tier, but I think he belongs at least a little bit ahead of Brendan Rice for third round rookie pick. These are all just very interesting prospects. I love this third round rookie pick tier. This is a great tier. Uh, Malachi Corley, Brendan Rice, Devontae Walker, Dylan Lau, Javon Baker. That is a very, very good tier. Um, either way, Malik Neighbors next. We're going to put him in true studs. Um, and we'll put him ahead of Brock Bowers for now. For now. Uh, no arguments there, right? Malik Neighbors, true stud. Uh, Malik Washington. We're going to put him mid to late second. I'm going to put him ahead of Braylon Allen even. Um, I'm going to move Keon Coleman down a little bit. There we go. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to put Malik Washington top of mid to late second round rookie pick. This is another guy. Very, very good college production. And then just a decent combine. But very, very good college production. I believe he led college football in receptions last year. Uh, so that's just nothing to scoff at at all. And it might have been receiving yards as well. Either way, just a really phenomenal season from him. And so I'm going to say mid to late second round rookie pick for him. Marshawn Lloyd. I'm going to put him in early second. I think that. Mm, I'm going to put him in early second for now, for now, but he might end up getting bumped to mid to late second. Um, yeah. Yeah. For now. I love Marshawn Lloyd though. I love Marshawn Lloyd a lot. So I want to put myself on the record for that. I'm just not sure if he quite belongs in the Jalen Wright, Blake Corum tier. I don't know. I don't know. And maybe I need to up, update. Okay, we'll, we'll just keep going. We'll keep going. Marvin Harrison Jr. True stud. And I'm just going to put him number one. I'm going to put him ahead of Caleb Williams even um, just because I like myself some Marvin Harrison Jr. And I think that it, it needs to be stated how much I love Marvin Harrison Jr. with some crazy stuff going around that he might not even be in some people's top five Rookie wide receivers, right? Like this is where we've come with the whole Marvin Harrison situation, all because he didn't work out at Pro Day and Combine. People are so low on him. He has done everything you want in a rookie wide receiver. I don't get it. I don't get the fade for Marvin Harrison Jr. at all right now. Uh, a true, true stud. I'm flag planting that. I would rather have Marvin Harrison Jr. over Malik Neighbors, Roma Dunze, Brock Bowers, Caleb Williams. Unless it's Superflex League, give me Caleb Williams. But even then, I think it's arguable. I still think it's arguable. It was arguable a couple months ago, and yet the only thing and the only thing that has changed is Marvin Harrison Jr. didn't go to the combine. And that just made everyone just lock in Caleb Williams. But it used to be an argument, and I still think it should be an argument. Marvin Harrison Jr., true stud. Michael Penix. I'm going to say yeah, I'll do late first. Uh, no, he, he belongs in this Bo Nix tier. He just does. And I'm just going to move Bo Nix down a little bit. We'll do. Yeah, that's a good way to break it up. That's a good way to break it up. Look at that. All right. We'll put Michael Penix at the top of the early second rookie round pick. 
and we'll move Bo Nix down a little bit. Uh, but I just think that, you know, they belong in the same tier. I know that, uh, that's how it used to be, right? Bo Nix and Michael Penix were compared to each other, you know, hanging out at the Senior Bowl together, all that fun stuff. And then all of a sudden, Michael Penix has just taken this massive leap over Bo Nix in terms of perception. But uh, I think it's much closer, and it's still really, really close to me. I'm going to put them in the same tier. I'll put Jalen Wright and Blake Corum, uh, you know, kind of separating the two. Michael Pratt. I'm just not drafting him. Just not drafting Michael Pratt. Don't really see the, the case for it, to be completely honest with you. Um, I, I, you know, backup quarterback is just what it screams. Ray Davis. We'll throw him right here. We'll throw him. All right, I'm going to move Ben Sinnott up. I'm going to. Uh, we're going to throw Ray Davis into the fourth round rookie pick. We're going to put him behind Kamani Vidal and Isaac Garendo, but still another running back that I think that people should be drafting uh, at some point in these drafts. Uh, we'll go ahead and put him here. I kind of want to move Ben Sinnott up the third round. I feel like it kind of, I'm going to move, I'm going to move Ben Sinnott up the third round rookie pick. I'm going to do it. Ben Sinnott up to the back of the third round rookie pick tier. Um, it, just cause I mean, I, you know, not quite the same tiers to Tavian Sanders, but I wouldn't say two tiers below him. So I'm moving Senate up, and we've just kind of got this like good running back tier in the fourth round. You know, I think that that's fair uh, with some okay wide receivers mixed in as well. Ricky Pearsall. We're going to do mid to late second round pick. I'm going to probably go crazy here. I'm going to put him right behind Braylon Allen. I'm going to put him right behind Braylon Allen, Malik Washington ahead of those two. Uh, I know a lot of hype is building for Ricky Pearsall. But I am not quite there with him um, at all. Um, I'm just not. I, I think that he's fine. I know he had a really, really good combine. But he didn't really put it together in college. And I, he also didn't necessarily impress me too much at the Senior Bowl, despite impressing a lot of other people. I think the, the, the tools are there. But when I spoke to him, I know that a lot of people don't agree with this type of analysis. But he just rubbed me the wrong way. Something doesn't seem right about, about him. I don't know. I don't know. So I don't feel comfortable putting him in this early second rookie pick tier that a lot of people are having him in. I'm going to put him mid to late second round rookie pick because he is definitely a special talent uh, and seemingly has separated himself from the Malachi Corleys and Brendan Rice's of the world. So we'll put him in in that tier. Um, and But I'm going to put him behind Braylon Allen. I think I would take Braylon Allen and Malik Washington over him, but I would take Jalen Polk after him. And I think that that's a good little cutoff. So... The next player is Roman Wilson, and I think he deserves early second round rookie pick capital. I'm going to put him right behind Lab McConkey. I really don't get why people are drafting Lab McConkey over Roman Wilson right now. I think they're both very much the same athlete, but Roman Wilson has more college production and profiles better as a wide receiver. Um, so I'm going with Roman Wilson for early second round rookie pick. Um right next to Lab McConkey. I'll put Lab McConkey ahead of him for just the 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 general public perception, but I really do want to put my flag plant here that they're in the same tier. Uh which brings us to Roma Dunze, who also is solidifying himself as a true stud in my eyes. I'm gonna put him I'm gonna put Brock Bowers ahead of him for right now. Um and we'll see what happens with draft landing spot and all that. But I I, I just I think that Brock Bowers is a different athlete than Roma Dunze. But Roma Dunze has earned the right to be a true stud. I don't think he's potential. I think he's a true stud. That's the big five, right? Uh and then arguably the big seven in super flex, uh with, when you throw in Jaden Daniels and Drake May. But we have moved on now to Ryan Flornoy. Ryan Flournoy, guys, is a guy that I'm putting at the top of the fifth round rookie picks. I don't want him to hit Fab. This is going to be a guy that you can get for Fab, but I'm drafting him. I like Ryan Flournoy a lot. Really impressive senior bowl, really impressive college stats, really impressive film, really impressive combine, really impressive measurables. Ryan Flournoy looks like a stud, and I think he's going to be a very, very good value. I would put him, I mean, I kind of want, I'm just going to put him at the back of the fourth round. That's how confident I am in him. Uh, I, I really think that he's a special, special player. Um, I guess special is not fair, but a very good player. Uh, and I think that whatever team he lands on, he's going to earn himself a roster spot. He's shown an incredible work ethic throughout his college career, going D2 to JUCO, recovering from an ACL, then transferring to, to D1 out of JUCO and leading his school in receiving yards two years in a row. Ryan Flournoy has that dog in him. I like him a lot. We're going to throw him in that fourth round rookie pick tier, a little flag plant action. Top of the fifth is probably where you could get him. I think that might make this look a little better, but... Yeah, we'll just do top of the fifth. We're going to do top of the fifth just to make it look a little better. But I think uh, uh, 
we'll throw them in fourth. We're going to throw them in fourth out of respect. And I'm going to put them even ahead of, well, we'll just do this. This looks good. All right. Uh, Spencer Rattler. I'll draft him in the fifth round. <laughs> I, I think that he is much closer to Joe Milton than people are giving credit for. This might be a hot take, uh, but neither of them looked very good at the senior bowl. Uh, Spencer Rattler looked a little bit better. So I'll go ahead and put him ahead of Milton. Um, but I, these are just some rookie quarterbacks that I think you've just got to take at the end of your draft and hope they do something. Uh, so I'm not necessarily going to put him in not drafting like I am Michael Pratt, but I'm not a big fan of Rattler. I'm going to put him in the same tier as Joe Milton. I think both have the same exact amount of potential. I really do. Joe Milton has a better arm, um, and went to Michigan. So, we, so I'm going to like him a little bit more. Uh, but I just think that Joe Milton and Spencer Rattler are going to get similar draft capital, to be completely honest with you guys. Joe Milton probably around later, but I don't think it's going to be that far off. Um, and I think both have, you know, project to have a very similar type of college career. So we're going to put him there, top of the fifth round, uh, Spencer Rattler. Theo Johnson. We're going to put it right next to Ben Sinnott here in that third round rookie pick. I'm going to put Ben Sinnott ahead of him. I think Ben Sinnott just profiles more as an NFL tight end. But Theo Johnson just has so much athleticism that I think a team is going to take a chance on him, and he has a lot of potential, like a, these, uh, like a lot of these other guys in my third-round rookie pick tier. Um, so that now brings us to Trey Benson, who I think you've got to put in the late first rookie pick tier, um, just because they're you know th that athleticism is so so good, uh, just super super good athleticism there, um, and. I think is arguably along with Jonathan Brooks, one of the the running backs that could get that, you know, that first running back drafted thing. And I think Jalen Wright and Blake Corm are just half a step below him. We're going to do early second versus late first. That's the very slight difference there. Very, very slight difference, but it's there. The difference is there. Um, next is Troy Franklin, who also belongs in this mid to late second round rookie pick tier. We're going to put him at the top of it. I think he's done enough to go ahead of Malik Washington um Braylon Allen I'm gonna put Braylon Allen slightly ahead of I'm, I'm gonna put Braylon Allen at the top of the tier I'm actually gonna put Braylon Allen at the top of the tier um but Troy Franklin ahead of Malik Washington great season at Oregon last year not the greatest combine but not a bad combine either so I'm gonna still keep him in that mid to late second round rookie pick it, this is kind of I like this tier and how it's turned out I think a lot of these players have the same exact feel um anyway Tyrone Tracy Um, I'm honestly, I'm going to, I'm going to mix around this fifth round rookie pick here. We're going to move Isaiah Davis, Cody Schrader, and Frank Gore down to the using fab. Uh, maybe not. Maybe not. Oh gosh. We're going to put Tyrone Tracy in that fifth round rookie pick. I think this is another guy that just is a little bit better than fab. Just a little bit, just a little bit. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna put him at fifth round, but we've got to. I'm gonna put Frank Gore into Fab, and probably and yeah, I think that that's fair. Okay, Will Shipley. We're gonna do we're gonna do top of the third round rookie pick for Shipley. I think a lot. Well, Will Shipley has crazy stuff right now. So I'm actually gonna we'll put him in this mid to late second round rookie pick tier. I would say ahead of. I guess, right? Him and Braylon Allen are probably about the same. I, I want to, there we go. Will Shipley, I'm going to put ahead of Braylon Allen for that pass catching prowess. Uh, but I'm not quite confident enough to move him into the early second round rookie pick tier. Um, so, yeah. We're going to put Xavier Worthy in stud potential late first rookie pick. We're going to do late first rookie pick. Well, no. We're going to do Xavier Worthy in stud potential. In fact, we're going to put him ahead of Brian Thomas and Adonai Mitchell. We're going to do that. We're going to do that. Yeah, look at that. Well, actually, what do we think about this? Ooh, that looks pretty good. Yeah, look at that. Okay, so stud potential. We're going to keep it Jaden Daniels, Drake May, Xavier Worthy. And then late first rookie pick, we're going to do J.J. McCarthy, Brian Thomas, Adonai Mitchell, Jonathan Brooks, Trey Benson. Yeah, that looks really good. Okay, Xavier Leggett. This is another guy we're going to put in this mid to late second round tier. 
Um, I, you know, people like him. I don't necessarily like him. Uh, I think, yeah, right around like Jalen Polk, Keon Coleman, Ricky Pearsall. I think that that's probably about where he falls. Um, and yeah, yeah. Okay. Maybe. I want to move. I'm going to move these tight ends around actually. So we're going to move Jatavian Sanders. We're going to put him in third round at the back of it. And then we're going to move Senate and Theo Johnson up to fourth round. I'm going to put them as the tier break between Isaac Garendo, Kamani Vidal, Ray, and eh, we're going to move Ray Davis down. Isaac Rendo, Kamani Vidal, Ben Sennett, Theo Johnson, and then Ray Davis, Bucky Irving, Audric Estime, Jalen McMillan, Luke McCaffrey, Ryan Flournoy for that fourth round rookie tier. And then at the third round, I moved Jatavian Sanders out of second round to the back of the third. I don't know. I just, I don't like, um, we've seen this prototype of tight end a lot of times now. Right, the 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 Jelani Woods is of the world, just these very athletic tight ends, and they don't necessarily pan out right. So I don't think I want to use my second round pick on Jatavian Sanders. I so I'm gonna move him down and I'm gonna move the other tight ends accordingly. Uh and I think that's fair. I think yeah, this looks this looks right. This looks right. This is a solid, solid tier list right here. I almost hmm. We're making more changes. Alert, alert, more changes, more changes. We are going to do this. We're going to move. Our fifth round is going to look a little bit different now. We're going to, we're going to do this. We're going to do fourth round. Uh, We're going to end. We're going to do this. Yep. Ryan Flournoy, Luke McCaffrey. We're going to move down to fifth round. The last fourth round rookie pick is going to be Jalen McMillan out of Washington. And then in fifth round, we're going to go Luke McCaffrey, Ryan Flournoy, the two quarterbacks. Um. And then I think oh, this is right. This feels 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 right. What do you guys think? I don't know. Jaquan Jackson, we're going to move down to Fab. And I almost want to do the same with Jacob Cowing, but not really. Oh, oh gosh. I like these running backs more than Dylan Johnson, Frank Gore Jr., Isaiah Davis, Cody Schrader, Tyrone Tracy. They're pretty solid. Yeah, I think this is about right. Uh, yeah, I'll move Jaquan Jackson down to Fab. I, I think he's good, but I think that Jacob Cowling has done enough to be a little bit ahead of him. But if you don't get Jacob Cowling, uh, be happy to get Jaquan Jackson a little bit later. Um, so I think that this is... Oh man, is this it? Is this the tier? Is this the tier list? I think so. I think this is it. I think this is the one. So true studs, Marvin Harrison Jr., Caleb Williams, Malik Neighbors, Brock Bowers, Roma Dunze, stud potential. We're going Jade Daniels, Drake May, Xavier Worthy. Late first rookie pick, we're going JJ McCarthy, Brian Thomas, Adnai Mitchell, Jonathan Brooks, Trey Benson. Uh, for late first, or sorry, for early second, we're going Michael Penix, Blake Corum, Jalen Wright, Bo Nix, Marshawn Lloyd, Lad McConkey, Roman Wilson. For mid to late second, we're going Will Shipley, Braylon Allen, Troy Franklin, Malik Washington, Ricky Pearsall, Jalen Polk, Xavier Leggett, Keon Coleman. For third round rookie pick, we're going Malachi Corley, Brendan Rice, Devontez Walker, Dylan Laub, Javon Baker, and Jatavian Sanders. For fourth round rookie pick, we're going Isaac Garendo, Kamani Vidal, Ben Sinnott, Theo Johnson, Ray Davis, Bucky Irving, Audric Estime, and Jalen McMillan. Then we're going for fifth round rookie pick, Luke McCaffrey, Ryan Flournoy, Spencer Rattler, Joe Milton, Jamari Thrash, Johnny Wilson, Jacob Cowing, Isaiah Davis, Cody Schrader, and Tyrone Tracy. Using Fab on Jaquan Jackson, Jaheim Bell, Frank Gore Jr., and Dylan Johnson. And then I'm just not even going to be drafting or touching Cade Stover, Jaden Sheridan, and Michael Pratt. I think that's I think that's about right. I think that's really about right. I really like this. I'm going to save it. Save. Download image. This will hit Twitter. See if that's see see what people think about my rookie tiers. But that should do it, guys. I think that I, you know, I've got a little bit different differing things than some people, but I like these rookie tiers a lot. I think that tiering out players is a little bit uh you know, a little bit more than I think 
a little bit more helpful than rankings because I think that the difference between like rookie five and rookie six is pretty huge. The difference between rookie 12 and 14 is pretty huge. So I think it's just nice to kind of tear this out. And again, I love this third round rookie pick tier and this fourth round rookie pick tier to a certain degree. I think the first few, especially like these are kind of my flag plants, Isaac Grendel, Kamani, but all Ben Sinnott. Theo Johnson, I think that uh, maybe just these first three, Isaac Rendo, Kamani, but all Ben Sinnott. Those are some of my flag plants. Third round rookie as well. Brendan Rice is another guy that I'm kind of throwing above a lot of other people. Uh, I just love Brendan Rice. I really do. I think he's going to be nice. Um, yeah, Luke McCaffrey, Ryan Flournoy, some other flag plants. But this is a nice tier list. I really like it. I think that this came, came together really, really well. And I'm excited to see what happens post-NFL draft. We'll definitely have a, one of these once that kind of sets itself. But I think this is right think that this is the tier list um so let's go ahead and see do we have any questions in the chat real quick let's see boop, boop. what's up paul says nothing much <laughs> nothing too much what's your thoughts on jag taking wide receiver in the first round i think it's very possible i think that they could definitely use one but they also need some help on the defensive side of the ball as well so i think it's just going to be a matter of who's there at their pick i don't see the jaguars being a team to trade up um, or necessarily even trade down. I think they're going to pick where they are, uh, and it's just a matter of what player is still hanging around there. Um, let's see. If May goes to the Vikings, does he jump tiers? I'm going to say no. Well, yeah, I'm going to say no. I still think that Caleb Williams deserves his own tier uh, for quarterbacks. I really do. Even if Drake May gets the nuts landing spot, he's still a project, right? Is, anyone, is everyone going to target RBs in the late rounds of wide receivers? Uh, yes, I think our back, running back is definitely going to fall like crazy in the backgrounds. I mean, look at this tier, right? Fourth round rookie pick, fifth round rookie picks. We have Isaac Rendo, Kamani Vidal, Ray Davis, Bucky Irving, Audric Estime, Tyrone Tracy, Cody Schrader, Isaiah Davis. And I mean, there's even more Frank Gore Jr., Dylan Johnson, Rasheen Ali. I mean, you can go on and on and on and on and on about the running backs that are going to be available late in our rookie draft. So I do think that that's kind of going to be the plan for the fifth round for a lot of people. Just get those handcuffs. Um, let's see. All right. I think that is it. Cool. Cool. All right. Yeah, not a big fan of Keon Coleman. But all right. That looks like it is it. That is it. Thank you all so much for tuning in. This has been a fun episode of Wake and Take. Glad to get the tier lists back out. Haven't, haven't done one since last year. So it's cool to bust those out. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe to Player Profiler and hit that bell icon so you get notified when we go live. And if you miss Wake and Take, if you can't catch it live all the time, make sure you subscribe to the podcast feed as well, available wherever you listen to podcasts. The link is in the description. So thank you guys again so much for tuning in. You have a fantastic Friday. A wonderful weekend. The draft is right around the corner. Now, I know many of you are looking for a secret. From the Podfather to you, I deeply appreciate you tuning in. And many ask, what can I do? What can I do to help support the host, the research they do, the production costs? Go to playerprofile.com, Dynasty Deluxe, World Famous Draft Kit, Rankings, DFS Dominator, and of course, Data Analysis. Subscribe to any one of those, and you support all of us, and take Player Profiler to the moon.